Love Letter to Grief. I know we took off a couple of weeks. It's been kind of busy. I was not going to cancel today. Here we are. So, uh, first thing I have to let you guys know, the show today is a little different from our typical shows because we actually kind of focus on one thing in particular. So, it's not really a lot of fun and games. We focus on grief. So, for you guys who don't know this, I did write a book. Here it is. It's called Love Letter to Grief, Learning to Walk by Faith. And it, you can, it's available on Amazon. If you click my bio, my YouTube link is in my bio. And on my Instagram page, you can find all of my links. Um, the book is on there. And um, I wrote this book less than a year after my husband passed away, which it was over four years ago. And um, it's just basically I journaled my entire grief process, what I was going through, how I handled different things, and just kind of things that I wasn't um, expecting to happen. It kind of helped me put things into perspective. So I, I was going to grief counseling and writing the book at the same time. So we do have a guest today, but I'm going to uh, bring in Emoji J, who's going to show you guys my book trailer, and then we'll get started. On May 6, 2017, I lost my husband. That sounds so innocuous, doesn't it? I lost my husband. As if somehow I misplaced him. As if I set him down somewhere and forgot to pick him back up. As if I let him out of my sight and forgot the last place I saw him. The truth is, I didn't lose my husband. He died. People always say to me, I don't know how you do this. They don't know just how close you and I have grown. Faith, you are how I push through. Faith, you are how I am okay. Faith, you are the reason I did not give up. Without you, I would have allowed myself to fall short of God's glory. Without you, I would not have trusted God and what a scary, lonely place that would be. Faith, you are the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But you are also the source of power and strength that I never knew I needed so much. My faith in God, His promises, His word, are the answers to how I survived this chapter of my life. Without my faith in God, the story would have ended far worse. The pages of my life would have read quite differently. But with my faith, I will continue to push through because although the grief journey is tough, I also know I will never walk it alone. This is my love letter to you about my feelings for you, a letter to not giving up, not giving in, and learning to walk by faith every step of the way. May the lessons I've learned, the stories I've shared, and the letters I've written be an inspiration to that broken heart I experienced the day I lost my husband. May my heartbreak be a source of light to help another broken heart find its way out of the darkness that grief creates. Thank you, Emo GJ. Okay, guys, so that was my book trailer. Like I said, if you guys click on my bio, my uh, book trailer is in my bio as well as um, if you go to my Instagram page, which is also linked to my bio, you can find the link for Amazon and all of my other information is on there. So um, every Sunday, I like to uh, come on and I'll read a brief letter that I wrote myself for my book and then we'll get started with our guest. Okay, so this letter was, um, so my husband passed away on May 6th. I wrote this letter on May 15th. I lethargically opened my eyes after sleeping for hours. My head feeling foggy, my eyes swollen, my heart is pounding, and hearing myself breathe ever so slowly. It is the Monday after the funeral, and everyone has gone home. The second both of my eyes opened, the tears flow like never before. I had cried the previous days, but this cry was different. I didn't have anywhere to be. I didn't have any calls that I needed to make. There's nothing to do. Therefore, I just lie in bed, sobbing uncontrollably, as what is left of my already broken heart continues to shatter even more. I can't make this I can't make sense of this agony. I can't make it stop. I can't control myself whatsoever. And what a scary place that is. I'm a prisoner to this pain, this sorrow, this sadness. 
this feeling unlike anything I've ever experienced. I never knew the human body could hold these many tears, so many that I wonder if I might, not, if I might drown. I am literally lying in misery, being tormented and covered in distress. Am I going crazy? Am I losing my, losing my mind? Am I losing myself? Am I going to die from the pain that I'm experiencing? How can anyone, how can anyone survive feeling this way? There is no way on earth I'm supposed to endure this pain I am physically, emotionally, and spiritually undergoing. Can a person actually die from a broken heart? What is this uncontrollable feeling that has taken over my body, I ask myself. It is nothing like I've ever read, nothing I've ever heard, nothing I've ever experienced. I realize what I'm feeling is the exact opposite of love. I'm feeling grief. I hate you, grief. You stole something from me that I will never get back. You took away a light that once shined inside of me and that optimistic spirit I always had. You've crippled me to this bed while making me question everything I thought I always believed. We would never be able to coexist. I refuse to continue to let you consume me. Grief, you are making sure that I paid the ultimate price for loving Darrell. This relationship I'm being forced to have with you is one I never wanted. But as the days, weeks, and months pass, I hope to understand how to handle, you, ha handle this heavy burden I've been dealt and how to continue to walk with my head held high even on the days like this where my heart is the heaviest. So, wow, like sometimes I read these letters and it's just like puts me mentally back in a space of where I was during that time. And this, like the crazy thing is I wrote this letter, like I say, the, night, the Monday after the funeral. And I remember, because like when you're planning a funeral, there's so many people around you, like all of your family's there, all your friends have come from out of town, people just everywhere, like coming from every door. And then after the funeral, it's like, you know, it, your life, and it's not that people mean it in a bad way, but everyone's life goes on. Like they have to just keep living. And so I just remember how weird that felt to be there by myself and thinking like, they know what I'm going through. Like, why would they leave me here by myself? And going through the grief when it first happens is so heavy that I remember questioning my, myself because I didn't understand how I was going to survive it. So you're going through it right now. Wow, Sunflower. Well, I'm glad that you can found the stream. And we try, I try to do this show every Sunday. Some Sundays I don't, but I try to do it every single Sunday. So we do have a guest today. Eastland Chick is here, and she has a love letter that she has prepared, and she's been patiently waiting. I want to say she wrote her letter three weeks ago, and every Sunday from, because of traveling and everything else, we just haven't done it. But I want to thank her for being patient because she had the letter written. She sent it to me. It is. I didn't read all of it because I like to hear it fresh when you guys hear it. I read a snippet. And I was like, wow, this is really deep. So, Eastern Chick, when you're ready, you can bust the, uh, the guest box and I'll bring you in. But yeah, if you guys are, you, if you're just coming in, welcome to the show. So, the show is called Love Letter to Grief because of the book. And every Sunday, we have someone different come on and they read a love letter to grief for, for someone they've lost. So, if you're, if you're here, like you say, Sunflower, you're going through something similar. If you want to come out on the show and read your love letter, just message me on IG and I'll definitely bring you in because I would love for you to be able to share your story as well. Hi, thank oh, you for wow. having me on your show. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, I think it's like a, like a, 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 a uh, Are you on your phone? Your, your phones? Your phones? Uh, hold on, let me get some earphones. Let me get some earphones. Hold on a second. I you need a Can you hear me okay? I can. I can. It's just an echo. It's just an echo. Okay, let me get some earphones. I'll come out of the box and I'll get some earphones. No, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. What do you guys think? Yeah, well, she left. Okay. So uh, she's going to come right back, guys. She's going to try to get grab some headphones. She's trying to turn her volume down. Okay. Eastland, if you don't see the headphones, we can maybe just have the turn it down a little bit and we can try and see if that happens, if that will help. But um, like I was saying, you know, every Sunday we do this, uh, we do the show. And my hope is, you know, there's a lot of things that we talk about. Hi, 6'4". There's a lot of things we talk about on this app, you know, every day that a lot, of, a lot of it's fun and games. We have a good time here. But we also have to realize there's a lot of people, and especially right now, like there's so many people who have mentioned the word death to me in the, in the last three days is overwhelming. Like last night during the verses, Top Badge Queen Bee 
I'm probably gonna start crying. And she came in a verse and she was like, travel, I didn't want to cancel on you, but I, I'm girl, I'm just going through so much. I just lost my dad today. And I was like, what? Like she lost her dad that yesterday, y'all. And she still showed up for the Battle of the Roses. I'm like, I just couldn't believe it. So it's just like everybody, like I know, um, I mean, it's just so many people have just been telling me they've been hit with, with hit with um, losing people. And like, you know, we all feel like we're trying to come out of this whole COVID scare, but it's like, we're not because every day I hear somebody passed away from it. So we just have to pray for each other, keep each other in our positive thoughts and, you know, be kind to each other. Cause you literally never know what a person's going through. We're on this app every day, talking to people, seeing people, Hey Mercedes, I mean to say, how do you love? We see people every day. And we just never know what a person's going through. So just try to be kind to people give people the benefit of the doubt. If, if you're having a bad day and somebody does something to upset you, try to be patient because you literally never know who is in front of you and what that person is dealing with. Um, sorry for your loss. Have you been able to, how are you able to get by day by day? Well, honestly, David, it's been four years. And so, I mean, just by the grace of God, like every, I like to tell people when they're dealing with grief, it doesn't hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you. It doesn't go away, but it just becomes more manageable. So we I've just been managing. Okay. So Eason Sheik, thank you so much, love. Like I say, thank you for being patient. I know I've been changing and canceling. You're like, listen, girl, I'm trying to come on here for you, my love. So thank you for being patient. All right. You may want to wipe your camera lens off too. Can you see if you would wipe it off? I think it's just because I've got my light on in the kitchen. Okay, yeah, maybe. Right, hold on. Okay. So I'm re ready when you are. Oh, hold up a second. Is that better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. I'm going to start. To grief. I first came to experience you when I was around 10, when my nan died. You took a big part of my life away far too soon. She was only 64. My nan basically raised me when my mum went to work. To see her in her final stages of life was horrible because I knew what was coming. She was hallucinating and didn't even recognise me or know that I was at her bedside. My next experience of you was when I was 21 when my precious little human, my son, died aged 14 weeks from sepsis just after Christmas day. I carried him for a whole 40 weeks and you took him away from me like that was just the worst emotional pain I've ever felt. A very different kind of pain compared to my nan's passing that no parent should ever have to endure. That day he died, I died too. He had the cutest little face, even though he couldn't talk. I could tell by the look in his eyes that he loved me. He saved me from my abusive ex and helped me end the six year toxic relationship. He was a very happy little boy who loved his mommy cuddles and only really cried to be fed. We had many times where we didn't Joy going shopping with his nan and sister, taking him to mother and baby classes and doing activities and taking walks out to town and just generally doing mum things. I often wonder what kind of boy and teenager he would be, what man he would become, what job would he have, what would he would he have got married, had kids, etc. A lifetime of wonder just to bestowed on me like that. You stole a grandson, a brother, a nephew, and a lifetime of memories from my family. Just why did you have to take him? His life on earth had barely started. His death plunged me into a deep depression. Over the last 12 years, I have come to terms with what happened, but it's still pretty difficult. I wish he didn't have to go but what little time I had with him, I believe he was here to teach me something. One thing for, that I'm grateful for 
is that he passed in his sleep and in his bed with me snuggled up in my left arm in the week before his passing. I didn't know he was so ill and even the doctors didn't know he was so sick. He just had a temperature that would come and go. We had a lovely Christmas together and he was so content and happy. Then four days later, you brought your shroud of death to my boy. He should have been burying me, not the other way around. Do you know how it feels to have your four-year-old, to have his four-year-old sister ask me why he had to die? He is next to my nan, so I'm happy that she is looking after him and he's not alone. I'm just about to start psychotherapy to help me deal with the bad things that I've gone through. I don't really talk about my son's death to anyone, so in a way, I'm kind of looking forward to it and to let out my emotions and get some support from others. After his passing, I went straight back to work from maternity leave without getting the help I needed so bad because I needed the money and I was offered a promotion. All those emotions suppressed the time of his death until now. And I worked probably the worst job to have at that time in a nursery looking after kids. My daughter is now 17 and as I decided ages ago, I didn't want any more kids, but I can no longer have children even if I wanted more. My reason for not wanting any more children is because I'm totally over the newborn phase, especially having a daughter near adult age and the fear of losing another child. I mourn for the woman I used to be. Wow. If you guys are just coming in, welcome to Love Letter to Grief. We just heard Eastern Chick share her Love Letter to Grief. And wow, that is... Oh, hold on. You did so well. You did so well. Oh, my God. Yeah. I knew I was going to cry my head off. I thought that. Take your time. So, uh, wow. you said something that there was one thing that stood out the most to me. Um, we're So, guys, the show is called Love Letter to Grief. I have a show every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a show where we have a guest come on and read their love letter to grief to what they've lost. And we just kind of talk about our grief journey, as you guys, some of you guys know. But I wrote a book called Love Letter to Grief. And so that's one of my missions is to be more transparent Thank about you, grief. Thank you. Help Thank you. One another go through it. Because it's one thing that every single person in this world is going to have to go through at some point. So I just want us to be as transparent about it. So when someone is going through it, and they're experiencing some of the things that she just read, they don't feel like they're losing their minds. So um, I, wow. That was um, very Literally, on the 22nd, it would have been his 13th birthday. Wow. And that same day, I had um, my first session of psychotherapy. Wow. Yeah. So let me ask you this. And um, why do you think it took you nearly 13 years to start? Um, Because after his death, I went straight back to work and um, I kind of kept my emotions suppressed for mm-hmm. all those years while I was working after maternity leave mm-hmm. and then I went to my doctors and it was just like the whole waiting list issue as well and then for some reason I got removed from the waiting list and then I had to go back to my doctors to get put back on the waiting list and then with COVID happening it's just delayed things yeah I mean I was contacted last year by my psychotherapist saying that we should start but Mm -hmm. it's like been a whole year since so yeah and how tough was that with you going back to work in a nursery after losing it was it was tough it was tough um like there was times where I would just like go off and cry. Like Mm -hmm. there was one time I remember that um, there was a song played that was um, played at my son's funeral Mm -hmm. and I couldn't take it. I had to go and go and cry, hide from the kids and go and cry. Yeah. 
I mean, and and you said you went back to work. How how long after he passed did you go back to work? Oh, um, he passed in the December, and I went back to work maybe June or July. Wow. I I mean, I just don't. I can't even even that. Like, and I understand it because a lot of people like the thing with grief is so crazy. Like you're, if you work for a company, most people's, depending on which country you're in, I know in the United States, your bereavement is like three days. Like yeah. financially, they're responsible for giving you three days to take time off. And then I don't know who they think can manage anything in three days other than the financial and business side of, of planning a service. You, you know what? When it came to me coming back to work, the manager wasn't even... Um, she she didn't even suggest that maybe I should take time off to kind of get some help. It was just kind of straight go back to work because uh, I had because I because I was offered the promotion. Yeah, um, yeah. it was more hours, um, a little bit more money. Yeah, and I needed yeah. the money at the time. So right, I and I understand that like the financial it. side of you know the thing is when grief happens, life doesn't stop. Like it stops for one person. Like, not just one person, but like, you know, it stops for you. And everything around you is like, it's just still moving. And it's like, you're still going to have to pay bills. You're still going to have to work. You're still going to have to take care of your kids if you have kids or whatever. It's such a weird space to be in. I I saw that you just came in, you guys. That's what I was telling y'all about. Make sure you guys hit Queen B with the fave. That's what I was referring to. My daughter was four at the time yesterday. So make sure you guys hit her with the fave. And Queen B, I've been praying for you. And your family, and I hope that you're doing okay. I can't even imagine how you're doing, but I've been praying for you. Yeah, my daughter was only four at the time, and I remember trying to make that phone call to my mom. Mm-hmm. And um, my mom just lost her, her dad yesterday. Eight. That's what I was saying. So she came into the verse yesterday and mentioned that she lost her dad. It was just, yeah, so I've been praying for her. So your daughter was four years old. Which I know, I've I've had friends who've lost people when they had little kids, and they say how the kids kind of help them because you can't just lay in bed and just give up because you have to have this little person that needs you. Know you. What? I'm going to be honest with you. When my son died, mm-hmm. I felt um, I felt very suicidal. Mm-hmm. But then I thought, my daughter, I, I I've got to stay strong for my daughter. Mm-hmm. If I'm not there, then then who else has she got? Yeah, you know, I'm virtually her only parent. Her dad doesn't see her, mm-hmm. so it's just it's just me and her. I mean, I've got my mum as well, but it's just me and my girl. Mm-hmm. What do you think was your hardest challenge? after losing a child and having to still, you know, like be as strong as possible for your, for your child. What do you think was the, your biggest challenge? Um, probably going back to work and mm-hmm. I guess like seeing other women with young babies, like mm-hmm. newborns, especially. Right. Because right. Uh, I guess in a in a little way I was envious mm-hmm. because they ha- they had what I just lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I can understand that because grief leaves you feeling so robbed, and so like trying to understand like you know how people say the craziest cliches oh everything happens for a reason. God makes no mistakes. But it's like, you can't tell that to the person who, who's going through it. Like, because to oh, you, it is a mistake. To you, it is. It's, I mean, it's too much. So. But I feel like he was here to kind of um, teach me lessons. Mm-hmm. Like, he had, um, even though he was only 14 weeks, he had a very wise look on his face. Like, mm-hmm. he'd been here before. So... I think he was here to kind of teach me something. And once he'd seen that he's taught me my lessons, 
then he kind of moved on. Mm-hmm. So what lessons so, do you feel like he was there to teach you? Okay, so I mentioned that um, my ex was abusive. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, like, there was social services involved and they were concerned about that I couldn't be a mum. Mm-hmm. So having him was my chance to show them, look, I can do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and at the end of it, they was like, yeah, you're a good mum. And I felt happy that I kind of, he'd helped me to prove myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he he just... He, once he'd done his job, he just left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if I could turn back the clock now and just have him back, I would. Because mm-hmm. I miss him so much. Do you and find yourself? Wish... Do you I find don't... yourself um, in a position where you feel like you can help other moms if you hear someone that? Say, say, lost his brother. I know, like me, a lot of people, I would say, Oh, I need you to call a friend of mine. She lost her husband. And it's people I don't necessarily know, but they feel like I can relate to that person I because think, of the particular death. Do you find it where people reach out to you to help other people that have lost kids? No, I've never been in that position. But mm-hmm. if, if you guys are just coming in, welcome to Love Letter to Grief, oh, guys. God. We're talking um, with a chick who just read her letter after losing her son. Oh God, I know he's running. <laughs> um, I don't know. No, I've never been in that situation. But mm-hmm. losing, like I said, losing my boy was mm-hmm. so, 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 so much harder than losing my man. Yeah. I mean, my nan had looked after me for many years while my mum went to work. Because my mum was a young mum. She had me when she was like 19, 20. Mm-hmm. So she was like still getting her career started and she kind of do full time. And my nan and auntie, who wasn't really my auntie, but I called her auntie, mm-hmm. she, um, she would um, help my nan look after me mm-hmm. because my nan was... Um, like she was hooked up to oxygen machine twenty four seven, so she could only go as far as the toilet and back, mm-hmm. and she couldn't. She always just sleep in her chair. Um, so yeah, but I think it was her death is like so different compared to my son. Yeah, yeah. I like to refer to it as I tell people all the time. Thank I feel like. We all are going to, we Thank all are so such too. friends, but I feel like there's one relationship that, to me, I say is your person. Like, it's that one person that if you, if you lose yeah. this person, it changes your entire life, the way you think and everything. Yeah, that that, that was my boy. That yeah. So when boy. you have that loss of that particular person, it's different. It, 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 nothing can prepare you for it because even after that loss, you may have more losses and you handle those completely different. Yeah. How you feel that person for sure. I mean, and I think, like, obviously, not only was it my boy, but like, I spent 40 weeks getting excited, preparing for him, getting mm-hmm. all the baby stuff in, and then he's just snatched from me like that. And it's just, I, I mean, it's just such a hard thing to try to make sense of. And then like, you, know, you love your friends, your friends think this is something that you're you've been promised. You almost feel like this is this is your gift, this is what you deserve, you, this is for you. So I can't yeah. even imagine. And then not only did he die, but he died four days after Christmas Day. Yeah. So I mean it's hard losing anyone as it is, but to lose someone around Christmas time is mm-hmm. like the worst thing probably imaginable yeah is there something that you feel like you've learned uh so far along your journey that has helped you the most 
Um, I wouldn't say, I don't know. Um, I'd probably say, like, go easy on yourself. Mm. Like, if you, you cry, don't beat yourself up for crying because that's, I would see that as like a, a process that you need to go through, mm-hmm. like a grieving process. And I mean, some people don't cry when they grieve, but mm-hmm. a lot do. So if you do cry, just don't beat yourself up about it because I did that. Like I thought, oh, I should have been able to protect him, but oh, I was his mum. You know, I should have known that he was ill. And for a long time, I did think it was my fault that he died. Mm-hmm. For a long time, I thought it was my fault that he died. Um, but now I've come to realise that even if I knew he was ill, it may probably have been too late to save him because the infection, it was just overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, the reality is, I feel like the thing with grief is it tries to confuse us by t- adding so many other compiling so many other things on top of our grief. So you're already grieving. I think it's so natural for us to start going through regrets and blaming ourselves for things, trying to figure yeah. out how we could have changed something from happening. But I think for me, I always try to tell myself, like, I just, in my head, I have to remind myself, I'm not God. I don't have a say on when, when someone's last day. And if God has, has it in his book that this person's this person's story ends on this day. There's nothing that I, you or anyone else that's going through grief could have done to change it. Like, could you have taken him to the hospital and, you know, mentally felt like you did everything you could? Yeah, possibly. But if God- I did take him, I did take him to- Right, but I'm saying, yeah. No, I know, but I'm saying as far as like blaming yourself. Like if God, if, if, even if you, if he were at the hospital, if God says that's the day, like we have no control over there but I know grief has a way of making us feel guilty about things that we can't be we shouldn't be guilty about but it's I think it's for me I honestly feel like grief is so hard to deal with one-on-one that it's easier to add another component to it it's easy to be like okay well I blame myself for this or this happened or any other emotion other than the grief it makes sense just let's just focus on this other emotion because grief is just, it's too much. And I and somebody wrote, put something in the comments. David's putting a lot of really nice, like a lot of really good stuff in the, com- in the comments. Thank and you, I agree with a lot of things that he's saying. But I will say one thing that I constantly hear people say that for me is different. I, I always hear people say, oh, well, God will never put more in you than you can bear. And I hear people say that. And my my truth to that is he does. He puts, uh, he puts too much on you to bear alone. And he forces you to get a closer relationship with him so that you go through it with him. And so that, that doesn't give me any more peace that, I'm, that I had to go through it. Like, look, God, you could have tested me with something else. Like, we could have did this safe test another way. You know, I'm open. But, you know, that's just, it's just it's how it is. And so, but nothing can prepare you for that. And I've never lost, well, I, I lost a pregnancy and I, I can't, com- I never try to compare what I've gone through to someone else try to say I can understand it because you, you can't. No, re- even yeah. if I have lost a child, every relationship is different. So, yeah. And trying to deal with it on your own is yeah, very tough. I never, That's why I pledge to starting counseling. I never um, really open up my emotions. I just kind of keep it bowled up, which mm-hmm. is probably the worst, worst thing I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard, like, for me to talk about what happened with my son. It's not easy. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a very sensitive to- topic, obviously. Right. Um, if you guys are just coming in, welcome to Love Letter to Grief. We have Eason Chick in the box who just shared with us yeah. her Love Letter to Grief. After um, her, he was I've just started. 
just right i've just started um psychotherapy so fingers mm -hmm. crossed and that's for a minimum of two years yeah it's yeah i don't know i mean it's just it's one of those things that everyone that you have to find your own journey to make sense of what you're going through and it's just super super tough so now that you have started your counseling how you've been in it for a, a week Literally, two weeks? I, I just started it on the 22nd. Um, it ha wasn't really a proper session. It was more like a kind of introduction, mm -hmm. kind of okay. getting to know everybody kind of session. Right. Um, right. But I think it went well. But now um, the psychotherapy department have decided mm -hmm. that we can no longer meet face to face. Oh. It's got to be over, um, <coughs> what is it called? Like a over tablet. Oh, like so a virtual? Like, yeah, yeah, so we'll be like on one screen, but mm -hmm. it's got to be over tablet now. But I am thankful that I did get to meet everybody in that group. Well, mostly everybody at bar one that um, mm -hmm. in person. So like when I go on the tablet on Wednesday, at least I can kind of say, oh, I know these people. Right. And you know, right. we've had a kind of face-to-face -face discussion. How many people are in your group? Um, sorry. I think it's me and six other people. Okay. Now, I'll be honest. The psychotherapist. I'll be honest. One of the things that I found to be really challenging is the groups. Like when I first uh, started counseling, I was doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. I went to one group setting and it was, it was too much. I couldn't handle dealing with my grief and having to sh be empathetic to other people going mm -hmm. through grief as well. That was a lot. But with you being a little, like it's been 13 years, maybe a group setting won't be as tough for it's, you. But yeah. it, was, it was really challenging for me. So I, I know that. some people who try to go to counseling, the group if even if the if you go and the groups don't work for you don't give up on it X, try to figure it out if you can do something no, one on one it will is for a minimum of two years so i've got quite a bit of time to kind of work it right, out right. and kind of get used to it so i'm yeah. not um worried if it doesn't work straight away i'll give well it yeah no 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 not you. i was just saying for someone else if there's someone in the stream that's listening who is who because i know sometimes people try counseling it doesn't work the first time and they give up on it. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. if you go and you, the group setting doesn't work for you, try doing one-on-one -on -one to see if it will. Because it's just some people are different. So Yeah. yeah but I'm glad that you found a group that you feel comfortable with. Yeah, what things um, do you feel like you want to work on the most? Probably my self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, that was not from my ex. Um, probably um, talking, mm -hmm. being able to talk more because I don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's all I can think of for now until I get into the psychotherapy properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Angel was saying that he, he tried to do the group setting, it didn't work for him because hearing other people's pain is triggering. So yeah. I can tell. I can understand that. that. I can understand mm -hmm. that. But, you know, I'll try it. It's been 13 years, well, nearly 13 years now. So. Mm -hmm it might be easier for me than if it's um if i was like two years down the line gotcha yeah well i i definitely feel like the time should be able should be helpful to you mm. maybe you know now that you're dealing with it what is okay so i always say that there's always one thing that a person goes through in their grief journey they kind of um they wish they knew earlier is there one thing that you wish someone had told you prior to, so you didn't 
spend so much time on one particular thing in your grief journey? I wish I was told to get help sooner. Mm. I wish that is I was very told to get that help is sooner. Because I think maybe if I got help sooner, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be such a mess now, you know, because it's been bottled up for all that time. So I think. You know, I might have been able to kind of um, avoid all those years of depression if mm-hmm. I'd got help for like right then. Yes. But, um, and honestly, I'll be honest with you. When I talk to a person, when I talk to people going through grief, and I hear things like, "Oh well, you know, I haven't go, I haven't talked to anyone. It's been a year." That scares me so bad. So to hear you say that it's been 13 years and you're just now going, yeah. my mind and my heart is just like bursting. Because I, I mean, can't even imagine trying to make sense about of all of those emotions and everything. I've all of those emotions that everything that you're going through, trying to mm-hmm. not do that by yourself without someone professionally trying to walk you through it. That is that is overwhelming. I mean, I've talked about it with my doctor. Um, mm mm-hmm. And like psychotherapists, mm-hmm. um, but that's it. I don't. I don't. I think I kind of avoid talking about it because I know I'll be a mess. Yeah, but it's like one of those things. Yeah, like, that I, even though you like, I know it's even if it's a tough subject. And everybody's different. Everyone. I'm not saying everyone needs it, but I just. I personally think that after certain losses, I think a person needs to sit down with someone who is trained to help a person understand all of those emotions they're going through. It's just like if you have a broken leg, you don't just let it heal by yourself. You go to a doctor, you get you get something to um, a brace, or you get something to kind of help it heal. So it's like your mental state and your psychological is the same exact thing. We have to make sure that we're going to someone that can help us heal the process. I know. I think I need to kind of, um, yeah, I need to to learn to start talking more. Mm -hmm. But I think, Mm -hmm. I think the reason why I don't talk about it is obviously because I don't want to face those emotions. But I Mm -hmm. think as well, I just don't like the feeling of crying. And I really should take my own advice by saying if you 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 kind of need to cry cry because i really yeah. should well i'm we're different uh Issa, i cry every day so there's not a day that goes by that i don't find a reason to cry and it's not always about grief i just i'm a very emotional person and i've always been very in tune with my feelings I like to get it out. Like I like to find something to make me cry. Yeah, Just I know, exactly. me cleanse my soul. <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely. I hear people say, "Well, I don't want to. I don't want to have to face it." But the reality yeah. is, you're going to have to face it anyway. I know. I know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to face I'm not, it. When I'm not, I go I'm to not to so Since it's a show for people who are listening, I don't know if there's like a delay in our timing or something. But I think I don't know. I think there's like a delay from us, maybe. But I just say, like, for people that are in the stream that are going through it or may know someone that's going through it, it's just one of the things that like, we have to kind of make the decision to face it head on. Otherwise, mm-hmm. grief will try to kill us. So. Um, yeah, I need to. I need to learn to kind of open up and start talking to people more. Yeah. But I think this is why, like, I kind of, like, I don't talk about it on, on here, obviously, because like, I'll just break down and I'll end up in tears. But there was a point in my grief where I just used to cry nonstop. For like mm-hmm. the first, I don't know, maybe 
three years maybe i was just crying non-stop i never used to stop crying um and like i'd never be happy like i'd never have a smile on my face i'd never like be able to talk to people like i'm talking to you now um Mm -hmm. i was just a mess all the time constantly Mm -hmm. I couldn't even um yeah simple little things like looking pictures at him I couldn't do mm-hmm. I mean I can do I can do that now but it took me a long time by myself to get there yeah yeah have you talked to any very many other moms who've lost kids no Wow. What? I mean, I've been to um, grief therapy before. Um, that kind of didn't work because I was, it was going good. Mm-hmm. And then the counsellor that I had had to stop counselling me. And then I had got someone else. So mm-hmm. the kind of the flow of the the counselling just was just broken because I've got this new person that I had to bond with and Mm -hmm. I don't we didn't gel like I did with the other person Mm -hmm. so I don't think that helped me either Um, yeah yeah I definitely think a support or maybe just even I mean on social media you have so many like different groups I know on Facebook Facebook is notorious for having all these different groups that people create themselves where you can just Google moms who've lost kids or you can either type in how you lost him and you'd be surprised if you could find a group of people that lost a child the same exact way. And they could probably relate a lot better than anyone else can because like even though I've had a loss, it's not going to be comparable to what you've gone through. We can talk about the pain of it and the challenges <laughs> But the actual relationship is just so different. Yeah, yeah it's a different kind of loss because mm-hmm. obviously Yeah, it's a, it's no matter what stage of your pregnancy or after you've had your kids, it's always hard, obviously, but the I guess the, the process that you go through is completely different right so for me i have a, one of my really really good friends um we were high I'm, we were high school friends we went to college together she's my college roommate and she lost her son um a year and a half before i lost my husband and i remember watching her go through it and i i never seen anything like it and i just remember it was one of those things that after watching it I feel like it prepared me for my own grief because I had a firsthand seat to watching someone literally have their heart ripped out of their body and watching her process and be, and she was so transparent. That's why I always tell people for me, it's about transparency because if we don't talk about it, we don't help. Like I can't let the death be in vain. If, if, if for nothing else, then God placed me in rooms and people need to hear something that I say that I went through that could help that person. Like, let me, bear my pain in my heart for someone who needs to hear something they may they may hear one sentence and be like dang i remember when i was there in travel said this and that's what happened for me when i watched her go through her grief and i heard her crying out for her son and i saw her relationship with god getting stronger and hearing her all of her challenges when it was my time to go through it i knew i could make it because i watched i just saw her do this like that was her firstborn child. It was her son. It was just horrific. He he died when he was seventeen. He was uh, sixteen. So it was just watching that for me was just like man. She she was just how watching how strong and how strong, vulnerable, and weak at the same time. Because sometimes we associate strong with being a person who is getting through it. But sometimes strong is just being realistic and saying you're not having a good. You're it's not going well because. If you can be honest with someone, that helps the next person when they're going through it. So I would definitely say that I would pray that 
at some point you're connected with people who are who would understand that loss a bit more than other people i mean people. on wednesday when i went to mm-hmm. the psychotherapy i actually did i didn't go into the reasons why i was in the class but mm-hmm. i did say to them I'm not having a good day today it's not a good day for me mm-hmm. and i think the people in the class actually appreciated the fact that i was that honest mm-hmm that I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how better to receive help than letting people know that you need it? Because a lot of times we gloss over these answers. People say, well, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. And if, if you're just telling people that you're fine, then we don't, people don't know that, that, that they can help you. Because they think you've got it figured out. So that's why I say be transparent. If someone says, how are you doing? Be honest. I'm having a bad day. It's not a good day. Today is one of those days where I feel like I'm drowning. I can't see the, I cannot see the positive side of this day. I don't see the purpose of this day. I'm literally in so much pain. Like people need to hear that because they, when they have those days, they won't be sitting there thinking like, well, dang, I watched Isla and she never experienced this type of stuff. What's wrong with me? But the reality is we all deal with that. So we have to be transparent in those answers. I mean, for the most part, I think I'm okay. But it's just those those difficult days, like birthdays and anniversaries of his death, that are really hard, really hard. And then it's 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 right there with the holidays, so that you know it that has to be super challenging as well. Because yeah, obviously Christmas is all about family, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And but to be honest, like I don't, I don't really see my family at Christmas, so mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. I don't really have to worry about that side of it. It's just about thinking about my son. That's that surrounds that kind of time period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I try, if I can, I try and keep myself as busy as possible mm-hmm. on the day mm-hmm. that he died. So I don't have to think about it so much. And I'm not there sitting down with it kind of running around my brain. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but it's, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, what can you do around Christmas when everything's shut? you got family enjoying themselves what can you do yeah watch a film for sure i understand that i I mean you can't yeah i mean it's not like if i can even really go go for a walk or something because like it's probably parks are probably shut Mm -hmm. shops are closed so try celebrating it make it a positive day instead of a dark one that's a good idea yeah i mean typically for me the day of like the the actual day of i have a little routine see diamonds but i feel like we have to sometimes try to create new memories we have to create new um what's the word traditions and try to do something to help or help us make it through the day but but it sometimes it's not even about making it to the day it's it's the day after because if you make it to the day it's still the aftermath of the fact that, that you had to even prepare for the day anyway. So it's overwhelming. I mean, I, I should really try and um, take Black like Angel advice and try and make it a positive day instead of a dark one. Like I've got like a little Christmas ornament for him as well with his name <laughs> on it. So I guess I could try and make it a day about I don't know if I was to remember him, right, make it about celebrating his life rather than kind of dwelling on what happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, he was here for a short while, but for that short while, he brought a lot of people, a lot of happiness and joy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe I could kind of focus that on that at Christmas time instead of just thinking about the last images that I have of him in my head. Yeah, yeah. 
And then it's the way that I mean, like the way that you lost them had to be super challenging as well. For me, the frustrating part is when my other kids ask me when their sister's coming back home. Wow. Yeah. I mean you and she had a four year old daughter, so that has to be tough as well. My uncle party for the Steelers just after his Oh wow. Okay, so you were you find a jersey every year and share his oh. company with others. That's nice. That's a, that's a it's nice way to kind of keep his memory alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just think you have to figure out ways, you know, things to do that can help you get through the day. For me, you know, my daughter, she's 14 now. So every year is usually I ask her what she wants to do. Because I focus more in on her. And for me, it's easier just to put my focus on her and make sure she makes it through the day. And that gives me, I feel like I have more purpose in helping her with it. So I definitely agree. We have to find things to kind of make the day not as, and it's okay. I mean, you're going to wait. Like for me, I give myself permission to wake up and be in my feelings. I give myself some time to myself, at least 30 minutes to an hour, just to deal with my own personal emotions. And then I have to focus on the world. Like my daughter lost her dad. His, he, well, his mom just passed away, but it would have been, you know, his mom lost a, a son. I have to focus on his dad who lost a son. Focus on but all then, the other relationships. So that for me helps me kind of make it through the day but, with more purpose. But then I've got like two days that I have to go get through. I've got Christmas Day to get through. Mm -hmm. And then I've got December the 29th that I have to get through, which is the date of his death. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if for, for instance, say like if he died on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. then I would have, just have that one day that I have to get through. But I've got two. Mm -hmm. well, but you know what, though? And I don't know what it is about death and holidays or birthdays. It's always something Everyone like... Everyone seems to die around Christmas. Yeah, it's always it's like, man, this person passed right before Thanksgiving or two days before their birthday or one week after my anniversary. Like my husband passed exactly one week after my birthday. A couple of weeks before it's just it's always but i think that's human nature we we attach to to a date that makes sense for us so even if it's not like a huge holiday it's something that's meaningful for sure mm -hmm. so david said he set up a foundation for his daughter and opened a school in her name just to keep her name going that's beautiful yeah like maybe doing oh. something that can help other people or you know but it's not that you have to help other people but just like i say finding purpose for yourself during such a tough moment mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to. I think I still need to kind of figure that out. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad that you have started some psychotherapy, and I'm glad that you're in a group of people that will hopefully be helpful and beneficial. Um, mm -hmm. I pray that you just you know just keep keep at it. If you yeah <coughs> come across someone else that's going through the same thing, definitely talking to them about it. Oh no, I'm sorry, Black Angel. Yeah. So is there one thing that you would like, so like in closing, is there something that you'd like to say, um, maybe just to help us understand um, his beautiful, like just his beautiful spirit so we can maybe feel like we, you know, I know you say he taught you a lot, but is there anything else you want to share? Um. He only really liked to, to sleep in bed with me. Mm -hmm. he, didn't like, mm -hmm. he was very fussy. He didn't like to be in his cot. He would only settle if he was in bed with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was um, a very fussy baby, but he was contented and he was happy mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the short time that he was here. And I'm glad that I got the the chance to to know him mm -hmm. even if it was for a few months yeah yeah um and i know he's very loved and missed by his big sister mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has his has she gone to any camp or anything um i know she i think she um used to go counseling but i'm not sure she does anymore uh -huh. when she was younger she, yeah. yeah i think she did uh, that's good well thank you for being so brave thank you for being patient and thank you for that sharing was nice. your, like I say, it, was, it was beautiful i i felt everything that you said like 
it was such a beautiful letter. And I'm sure that he's super proud of you for doing it and making through it, even though I'm sure you thought you weren't gonna be able to. But the challenge, like I always tell people, the challenge is writing the letter. And of course, you know, we're gonna yeah. pay and let you read it, but it's just it's very final having to write a letter like that. So Yeah, you know what when it came to writing the letter, what I wanted to say just seemed to flow. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of easy to do it. I didn't really have to think because I think it was it was there, but just waiting for me to put it down on paper or yeah. in yeah. my notes. Yeah. So and maybe you can was, share that. Maybe you can share your letter with your with your psychotherapist when you go there, because that may be something that can help other people. Yeah. Like re- hearing you yeah. read it aloud is like very it was very powerful. True. I'll save it and I'll keep it and show it to him when I go and see him next. <sighs> okay, thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. Thank and you so thank much. You for... so if, you're, if you're still here, thank make sure you hit her, hit her with the fade. And when, do you, how often do you, do you try to stream? Um, I do try to stream, oh, maybe a few times a week. Okay. Maybe four time, three to four times a week. All right, so okay. you guys make sure with the play. Try to go by and see her on stream. Show her some love. Uh, we're gonna hope that Thank she you for the gifts, people. More. <laughs> and continue to be transparent. And continue to be honest with people about what you're going through. You never know how many people come through our streams who need to hear exactly what God placed you in that room to say. So yeah, true, but yeah, I'll try and I'll start talking more. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, Travel Bay. You're welcome. Thank you, love. Thank you. Okay, so you guys, I was trying to read all your comments. If you guys are just coming in, welcome to Love Letter to Grief. We just finished talking with Eastland Chick, who shared her love letter to grief that she lost her son in 14 weeks, uh, and that was 13 years ago. So, beautiful letter. If you missed the letter, it was a good. It was beautiful. Um, the one th- she said so many things that just made that just stood out to me. The one thing that, that stood out the most was she said that she recognizes that her 14 week old child was sent there to, sh- to teach her something and um, helped her get out of a bad relationship and just helped her focus on and learn a lot of things. So I think that's always good. Like if we can find the positive of why God even allowed certain paths to cross, like he didn't promise us that we would have these relationships that will last forever. He just promised us that we wouldn't have to go through it by ourselves. So, and I know everyone's not super spiritual or religious. I am. It was my saving grace. I don't know how I could have dealt with grief without being spiritual and, and having faith. But, um, you know, everyone's different. But for me, hands down, my faith was what kept me grounded, kept me sane. And um, I really appreciated her being very honest with us. You tried to focus on the positive at the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I think focus on a positive is a great thing, but I never want a person to feel like they need to be forced to focus on the positive because at the end of the day you're going through something really 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 horrible <clears throat> and we have to sometimes like i say we have to look grief square in the eye and accept that it's there and that we want to deal with it so that's the challenge it's just you know having to deal with it and i know free i was reading your comments about losing your aunt and being there for your mom i know how tough that that has to be and I know there's a lot of people who come to this show on Sundays because they are dealing with grief and, um, you know, they, they are trying to make it through different scenarios. So if you're in here being quiet, I'm praying for all of us as we're going through this. Um, again, Queen B just lost her dad on yesterday. Miss Dick was talking about she just lost two family members that she had to go to um, funerals for yesterday. It's just a lot. People are just... I don't know what Jack's talking about, but yeah, people are going through a lot. It's like, you know, we, we feel like COVID is trying to get behind us, but th- this past year and a half has just been overwhelming for grief altogether. There's just people who are just dealing with it. It just, just, it's just a lot. It's overwhelming. The emotions, the waves of grief can be overwhelming, but I can just say for me, the positive has always been, I know that I had faith the entire time. God has continued to walk with me. Um, he's continued to place me in conversations that I need to be a part of to hear things or say things to help someone else. And I just feel like transparency is the best thing that we can all do. If you're going through grief, speak about it aloud and you never know who you're going to help. 
So if you're in here and you want to be on the show next Sunday or one of the following Sundays, message me on IG. We'd love to have you guys on. And um, I really enjoy it. I mean, I, like I say, I hate when I have to cancel the shows because I really, really do enjoy doing this show. But it can be, a, it's, you know, I've just been busy. The Bible teaches us that the day of death is more important than the day of birth. Hmm. And David, you say a lot of really interesting things. So if you would like to be on the show, message me on IG. And so we can get with you. Oh, uh, Emoji J, uh, you can, I'm going to wrap it up. But guys, again, thank you for so much for coming to Love Letters to Grief. Again, if you click on my bio, my Love Letters to Grief book trailer is in there, as well as on Amazon. You can, I mean, on my IG, it connects you with my Amazon link to purchase the book as well. So um, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it so much. I'll be back later on uh, today. But thank you so much for Eastland Chick for being so transparent, so, again, so patient. She's been waiting like three weeks to read her letter. So um, I appreciate you. Thank you, Moji J, for being here recording. If you guys ever miss one of the shows, click on my link to my YouTube channel. Emoji J uploads the videos every week. So you can always catch the past shows. If you're on it yourself and you want to watch yourself back. Like Eastland Chick, just imagine a year from today, you're going to watch this video be like, wow. I've come even that much further because every day, every week we get through grief, we get closer to a point of feeling a little bit better. So thank you guys for being here and I will see you guys later. And thank you guys for all the gifts. I saw you guys with the gifts. I appreciate you so much. You've been watching the videos. Good. I haven't watched a lot of them myself, but I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful that they're there. And I have been getting notification that a lot of people are viewing the videos. So that's a good thing. And hopefully by us all being transparent, we can help somebody else. So free, let me know when you're ready to come on the show. Because I know you're going through a lot. And, you know, maybe writing a love letter could be helpful for you as well. All righty, you guys. I will see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for being here for Love Letters to Grief. Learning to walk by faith. Thank you guys. Bye.